Welcome to Chandwell. I'm part way through making this overall canopy for my station and I thought I'd spend some time to show you how I used Inkscape to create the trusses. Now I'm not an architect or an engineer and I'm pretty certain that these trusses aren't actually correct. However, I'm aiming for an overall look with Chandwell. So with that disclaimer in place, let's take a look at how I used Inkscape to design these trusses. Okay, so I've opened Inkscape from the beginning and what we're going to do is start designing the trusses, the triangular trusses. So I'm designing this roughly on the canopy at Ilkley, which was made up of equal sized triangles that went across the tracks and the platforms. With that in mind, I'm going to make a start. Now in Inkscape, you always get the A4 piece of paper in the middle. You can turn that off if you wish, but I leave it on, I'll just scroll it out of the way. So I'm using my mouse, I'm scrolling up into a nice fresh area. So to start with, I measured my layout, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some guides to help me work out what size to make this roof. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool by selecting it there, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Now you can see that by default, Inkscape has decided to make the rectangle red with a black outline. Now I always try to get rid of outlines, I'll explain a little bit why later on, but for now let's get rid of that. We'll move down here to the white square with the red cross through it, we'll hold down shift, and we'll click our mouse on it. Holding down shift lets you change the line colour, so by doing that we've removed the line and we've just got a rectangle. It doesn't matter what colour it is, I'm going to use this colour. So at the back of my layout, the first bit that I want to measure is the platform. So the rear platform is 58 millimetres. So we're going to come here and see I've actually drawn it 7.884 millimetres, so we can just replace that with 58. And that creates a rectangle 58 millimeters high. I'll make it a bit wider. So that is my back platform. I can hold down control and wheel my mouse to zoom in and zoom out. So just make it so it's comfortable and we'll move that up there. We'll make a note that this is the platform. Okay, so after the platform is the track bed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the platform Hold down control and press D and that duplicates it. So we've now got another rectangle. Now if you look up here, we've got snapping on. So what that means is as I drop it underneath the rectangle that I've already drawn, it'll snap into, into place. So I'm gonna pop that there. I'm gonna make it a different color so that I know that this is something else. And I measured my track bed at 49 millimeters. So we'll change this to 49. We'll drop a te some text on it. And then comes the next platform. Now the next platform, Control D, I'm gonna drop underneath. I'll take the text as well actually, Control D and drag that down. That one I measured at 57 millimeters. So that's a millimeter shorter. And then we've got another track bed and I'm just gonna hold my mouse, draw around that. Any, any shape or text that's wholly within what I'm drawing will get selected. So it's selected the text and the rectangle. Control D to duplicate drag it down, drop it there, zoom out a little bit. Now this track bed is 52 millimeters, so that's a bit wider. And then beside the track, I'm gonna have some kind of gap and some kind of building. Now the roof is going to, the roof is going to join onto the building. Um, so I'm just gonna drop, drop that there for now and we'll work out what to do with that in a minute. So I'm, build, I'm basing this on Ilkley, and I want to have a triangular girder, a triangular truss, going across this, pl this platform, this track, this platform, and this track, and joining onto the side of the building at the lower end of the platform. Further up the platform, I'm just going to have three triangles, the one above the platform, the one above the track, and the one above the other platform. Now immediately, the first problem is we've got different widths. So there isn't a uniform width that I can give to those triangles to make them fit exactly. So what I've decided to do is I took the total of this platform, this track, and this platform. If you see there, that's 164 millimeters. If we take a third of that, so what we'll do is we'll draw roughly the base of the triangle. So this is going to be the width of the triangles that are going to go into the roof. A third of 164 is 54.667 millimeters. So if we take that, that is exactly a third. And if we drop that using snapping to the top of there, to there, 
and to there, you'll see that that fits perfectly. So let's make the triangular truss. I want this to look like pieces of iron um, or steel welded together. So let's make ourselves some girders. So to make a girder, we select the rectangle tool and just drag it out to a rough girder shape. Now the bottom part of the girder, I want to be a little bit less than two millimeters tall. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give this rectangle a height of two millimeters. And if we zoom in, I'll show you why I chose two millimeters. I said I want this to be actually less than two millimeters. The reason being, and this is when I come back to talking about the lines, if I add a line to this rectangle, let's make it a black line. So I'm gonna hold down shift and click the black. You'll see there it's added a line. Now I want to make sure that I know the width of that line. So if you haven't got the fill and stroke palette up open already, you can do it like this. You can go to object, fill and stroke, and that then this then appears. If we click on stroke style, we can see that the width of that line is 0.2 millimeters. Now 0.2 millimeters is perfect for cutting out. When I do my cutting with my scalpel, I tend to remove about 0.2 milli millimeters of the paper in doing so. So my lines are always 0.2 millimeters wide, and when I cut them out, the line disappears and I'm left with what's inside the line. So because that line is 0.2 millimeters wide, there's two of them, so that's 0.4 millimeters, but the line goes along the edge. So half of the line is outside the shape and half the line is inside the shape. So what we're left with, the actual shape there, if we measure it, you'll see there it's 1.8 millimeters. So it's got 0.2 millimeters of line on two sides but half of each of those lines are outside of the shape, so we're left with 1.8. So if you're working at this tiny scale and you want something to be exact, bear in mind that the lines add on a little bit of width, but they don't add on as much as you think because half of the line is on the outside of the shape. So anyway, I want this girder to be 1.8 millimeters tall. So if I remove the line again, you can see there that the height of this rectangle is two millimeters with that in mind. So we've got a two millimeter girder, Control D to duplicate, drag it down, make this one a different color. And I want this one to be, I want it when it gets printed to be 1.4 millimeters. So we're gonna make it 1.6 millimeters. And then we're gonna have another girder as well. And this is for the inner parts of the girders. The smallest I dare go, and considering I'm cutting this with a scalpel, and it's gonna be made of half millimeter card is one millimeter. I want these little girders to be one millimeter wide. So I'm gonna make it 1.2 millimeters for the little bits. So we've got some girders there now. So now we can start using these girders to construct our triangles. So I'm gonna select the thick one, Control D to duplicate and drag it up there. Now, remind ourselves of the width of the triangles. So the base of the triangle wants to be 54.667 millimeters wide. So we can come back here, select our girder, and change the width from the random width that we drew to being exactly 54.667 millimeters wide. Let's make some of these girders shorter as well. So next, we want the top of the triangle. I want the, these parts of the triangles to be made of this medium-sized girder. So I'm gonna select it, Control D to duplicate it, and drag it up there. Now there's lots of ways to make triangles and girders. Uh, this is a method that I used, so I found it quite straightforward and also quite accurate, and I quite like the result that we ended up with. Now in Inkscape, when you, select a, when you select a shape and then select it again, you see these rotational handles. You can then select these and rotate it. And what you could do is you could rotate it and drag it and rotate it and play with it until you got something how you wanted. However, there's a much easier way. By looking at photographs of, this, of the roof at Ilkley, I estimated that the pitch of the triangles was about 30 degrees. Now, in Inkscape, you can rotate 30 degrees very easily. If you hold Control down and move it, it moves in 15 degree in increments. And you can move it until it says 30 degrees down at the bottom. That's good, we could do that but it's an even easier way, and that is to use the Transform tool. And this helps you get very, very accurate rotations. So if we go Object, Transform, you'll see the Transform palette opens. And if we click Rotate and type in 30 and then click Apply, that is then rotated exactly 30 degrees. So what we'll do is we've got our 
girder. We want it now to be aligned to the bottom corner of our girder. And what I'm going to do is snapping is turned on, so I'm going to drag it until it snaps perfectly into that corner there. You see it says corner to corner. It drops into place very nicely, corner to corner. So there we've got one half of our triangle. Now, we could duplicate this. We could start again and rotate it negative 30 degrees to get it going the other way or what we could do is press ctrl d to duplicate it and then click this here the flip selected objects horizontally button if we press that it flips it horizontally for us and we've got the mirror image of the girder then all we need to do is zoom in drag it clip it to the corner and there we go so there is the basis of our triangular girder so we need to turn this into an actual girder now and the reason I'm doing it like this with these girders is it's difficult to reshape triangles. If you do, you'll notice that as the triangle gets smaller, the girder gets thinner and thinner and thinner, or it gets fatter and fatter and fatter. So by building it like this, you get to maintain the exact thickness of the, the exact thickness of the walls of the triangle. So we've got our triangle. Let's turn it into an actual girder. I'm going to use this, the draw bisect curves and straight lines tool. By selecting that, we then get a pen. And as you click, it draws straight lines. If you click and drag, it draws curved lines. But I pressed escape, get rid of that. We don't need that at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw around the outline of our girder. Now we've got snapping turned on. So you'll see that as I go around, it says handle to corner. Handle to corner. But it doesn't snap to this point up here. That's because we don't have all of the snapping options turned on. And I'm going to turn on this one here, um, which is snap to path intersections. That's the important one. With that selected, you'll now see that it drops into that groove where the two lines cross, handle to path intersection. So we're set up, ready to go. So let's get our zoom ready. And starting at the bottom corner, I'm going to click, wait until it snaps, click again, wait till it snaps, click again, wait till it snaps, click again, Wait till it snaps, click again, and now this is the final line. I'm going to hover it over this, this original point until it turns red. I'm going to double click. And there we have the outline of the girder. So that's the outer part of our triangle. Let's do the inner part. So click, 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 and double click. We now have the two parts of our triangle. Now, I'm going to select the outer part by clicking on it and then holding down shift, select the inner part. That gives me both triangles. I'm going to press Ctrl D to duplicate them and I'm going to drag them up just out of the way of our frame. So there's the outline of our girder, but at the moment it's just two different shapes. So that's not ideal. So what we want is I'm going to colour them in so you can try and see what happens. I'm going to colour the large one in red and the smaller one which is on top I'm going to colour green. So what we want to do is we want to take away the green bit from the red bit to be left with um, a, what the shape that we want. So I'm going to select both shapes. I'm going to do path difference. Now what path difference does is it removes the shape that's on top from the shape that's underneath. So by doing that, you'll see that the green triangle has disappeared and we're left with a red shape with a hole in the middle. So that is exactly the shape we want for the outer part of our girder. So we're going to come back down. We don't need that inner one at the moment, so I'm going to delete that. And what I want is two little bits of girder in the middle, the, the, the bits that strengthen the triangle. So to do that, we're going to use the narrowest of our beams. So Control D to duplicate. Let's drag it up. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. Now for this bit, this will be helpful to have a guideline down the center of our triangle. So there's lots of different ways in Inkscape to add guides. Um, you can actually have a proper guide, but I just quite like just drawing a, a line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap handle to path intersection there, which starts a, a line in the middle of the triangle. I'm going to hold control down, which lets me draw an exact straight line, drag it down the bottom and then just double click. And that creates a line in the center for me. I'm going to select the line and in the stroke style, I'm going to make that just 0.1 millimeters wide. So that's just a very thin guideline to show me where the center of the triangle is. Now, I don't really know how angles work in these kind of beams, but it makes sense to me for this to be roughly this kind of shape um, in such a way that this angle here is 90 degrees. 
So to do that, we already know that this is 30 degrees. So if we rotate this one 60 degrees, that is now a lovely right angle here. So what we need to do is we need to just get that somewhere so it's in the center. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this so that it's exactly down the center of that center line that I created. Now if I select that center line and send it to the back, uh, lower selection to the bottom button, it puts it behind the girder so I can get it to exactly where I want. And I think, I think that, will, that will work like that. So we don't need that center line anymore. I'm going to delete that. So this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same as before. I'm going to use the Draw Bizer Curves and Straight Lines tool. With it snapping, I'm going to snap there, snap there, snap there, and then double click there. So that gives us one part of the girder. Now I'm going to do this side, I'm going to do half of the gap here. So with it snapping there, I'm going to select there and then click there. So that's the center. I'm going to hold control down so I can draw an exact straight line down until it hits the yellow and you'll see there that it's snapping handle to path. So I'm going to click that and then I'm going to come up there and I'm going to double click this. Now the reason I'm doing that is I want this to be exactly symmetrical. Now I didn't want to risk drawing another blue line up there and getting it ever so slightly out. So I've drawn that half there and you'll see how I'm going to sort that out to make it symmetrical in a second. I'm going to select that. I'm going to press Ctrl D to duplicate it. I'm going to press flip selected objects horizontally like that to select it horizontally. And then because snapping is on, I can just drag this until it reaches the top of that. So that's join cusp node to path intersection. So let's put it directly at the top there. So we've got this weird two shape here. If we select both shapes and do path union, that, com that combines it and creates one shape. So we've now got one shape, which is exactly symmetrical. And we can tell it's symmetrical by clicking the flip selected objects horizontally button. And you can see that as I click it, it's making no difference to that shape, which means it's exactly symmetrical because when it's flipped, it's the same shape as it was before it was flipped. Now we're going to do the same with this triangle, Control D to duplicate flip horizontally. You can see there that in brackets it says H, so I can just press H to flip it horizontally and I can drag this now and just drop the point in the path intersection, cusp node to path intersection. So we've now got those three pieces and if we select all three, holding down shift, select that one, that one and that one and then use path union, that turns that into one shape. And again, we can test that it's symmetrical by using the flip button. And as we are pressing the flip button, nothing changes. So we've now got the inner part of our girder. If we select that, holding down shift, select the outer one, press Ctrl D to duplicate it and then drag it up. We can then do the same thing as we did to this one, which is take the inside away from the outside. So there's the outside, there's the inside, select them both, do path difference and now we've got the basis of our girder and that's the shape I was looking for. It's quite pleasing to the eye and I like it a lot. Technically speaking, by putting these two posts here, I've created an incorrect truss. It should really have an upright one as well in the middle so that everything is made up of triangles. However, I thought that was gonna to be too busy and also a little bit tricky to cut out. And I'm aiming for an overall impression here rather than absolute accuracy. So I'm quite happy with this compromise. So those are our basic girders. And what I'm going to do is I will cut this one out of one sheet of half millimetre card. I simply print it onto A4 paper, stick it to card. Once the glue is dried, I cut it out. And I'm going to have two of these ones. And those ones are going to be on top, like this. So that it gives a little bit of a 3D kind of effect to the girder. The roof at Ilkley, it isn't glazed all the way up to the top. It's glazed about three quarters of the way. And then there's a little bit of extra on top. Um, which is glazed on top of that with a gap underneath and I assume that let, let all the smoke and the steam out So I need to model that as well. So what we'll do is let's try and get the shape of that I'm going to duplicate this one Control D and just drag it along to the side I don't want the outline to be on anymore So I'm going to remove that and what I want to do is I want to get this little this little hat on and I could do this using um, some kind of maths or exam exact measurements and things, but I'm just going to use it um, by eye. I'm going to create this little rectangle and drop it on 
uh, midpoint to cuspinoid, so it's exactly in the middle of the triangle, and I'm going to move it up a little bit to here. Actually, I'll use this one as the guide. I'm going to duplicate that and drop it on top. Colour it in a different colour, take away the outline, move it to the back, and then delete that one. So the reason I did that is I thought I might line it up with these lines here. So if I use the pen and draw a line up, now I'm holding control down because this is at 60 degrees, that's a constrained angle. So I'm holding down control, it keeps it at 60 degrees. I'm just gonna drag that up there and double click at the end. So I've created a guideline up there and I can do the same with this. So if I can snap that to the line midpoint, I can then snap this line to somewhere along here and to do that I need to make sure that snap to paths and I'm going to make this significantly smaller. So now the snapping is all turned on I'm going to snap there line to midpoint then I'm going to hover over here so it's snapping to path until it's at an angle that I quite like so something maybe more like that. Snap it snap it, double click, delete the guidelines, fill that in a colour, remove the outline, control D to duplicate, H to flip horizontally, drag it round there and drop that down. I'm going to draw around both of them, do path, union, so that's there as a guide and uh, we can move that up, we can duplicate this one and drag it along and we can just duplicate the little hat that we've made by control D and drag that down and drop it on top as well. So if we make if we remove the outline of this one, we've now got the building blocks of our roof. So the roof is going to be four triangles long. So what I'm going to do is I need to make it in two parts. The inner part, which is going to be comprised of this one, I'm going to have that have the little hat on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. Now whenever I'm going to join shapes I always keep duplicates so I can go back and modify them if I need to. So by duplicating that, selecting the hat and the main girder and doing path union, that changes it into one shape. So there's that and what we can do, we can control D and duplicate it and drag it up and like I say I was going to have four triangles so I can press control D to duplicate it. That lets me move it around because snapping is on, I can just drop it next to its partner like that. I can select them both, Control D to duplicate again, and drop it next to that one. So there is the inner part of the first girder. So that will be cut out, pasted onto some 0.5mm card, and that will be the inside of the girder. We now want the outer part of the girder as well. So this one isn't going to have the little hat on it, so I'm going to use this one. I'm going to duplicate it drag it up, remove the line, duplicate it, drag it along, snap it beside it, select them both, duplicate it, drag it along, drop it beside. So there is the outer part. And if you remember, what I'm going to do is those will be stuck on top of the inner part like that, so that when it's glued together and there's two outer parts and one inner part, the overall girder will be about two millimetres thick. That's three layers of 0.5 millimetre card plus the paper. It works out at about two millimetres. So we'll have a two millimetre wide girder looking something like that. So what we'll do is we'll select those four, do path union, turn it into one shape. Same for these, path union, turn it into one shape. So we're almost there. However, these things are going to be held up by columns there on that platform and there on that platform. This one is going to be held up into the side of the building. What we're left with is this inner triangle kind of being supported only by its edges and this one only by one edge. Now, whether or not that would in real life stand up or not, um, in Ilkley, the, the triangles that are floating over the platforms are held up by an extra girder going along there like that. So let's let's model that as well and it'll also give our roof a little bit of extra um, rigidity. So what I'll do is I'm going to take the wider of the girders because I want this to be substantial enough to I want it to reflect the bottom girder that's holding the, the whole thing up. I'm going to duplicate that and drag it up, drag it up a bit more and then just place it somewhere that looks all right. Now, at Ilkley, it goes in, it goes underneath the top, the top bit of glazing, so it makes sense for it to be somewhere like that. Now, for this kind of stuff, I'm going to take snapping off 
by clicking the enable snapping button that takes it off and we'll just move this to roughly where it looks good so there to there so that looks about right. I'm going to select it, press Ctrl D. Holding Ctrl down, I can move the mouse side to side so it stays in exactly the same place um, horizontal, and just move it horizontally. Drop it there. Uh, Ctrl D, do it again. So now that's roughly what I want. So let's delete that. What I'm going to do, I can select the whole lot. I'm going to duplicate it and move it up. And the reason being, I might want to come back and do something with this girder. I'm going to duplicate the red one and drag it up and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it on top of the inner one there now oh, I've got to turn snapping back on drop the red one on top of the dark red one and then <clears throat> you'll see that it doesn't quite meet um, the red so with snapping off and holding down shift which changes the both edges you can see it's going like this I'm just going to drop it somewhere where it matches the hole where it goes un into the red. So I'm going to do that there. Okay, so now I want this to be merged with the dark red and the light red version. So I'm going to select one, holding down shift, two, three of those. I'm going to duplicate them. And then, so that's created a copy of those three. Holding down shift, select the red. Do path, union. That's created them into one shape and press control and then drag that up and that's created that one there these are now in the right place for the dark red which i'm going to duplicate and drag up so i've got a, a copy of the original select them all do path union and there we are so what i'm going to do now is this and this comprise the girder in fact one girder is two of two of the outer ones and one of the inner ones so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to line them up nice together we then select them all. We give it a fill of white, an outline of some kind of mid gray. Make sure the lines are 0 0.2 millimeters wide. And then this is copied, control C. We'll go down to where the page is, control V to paste it. It's too wide for some A4. So if I press control G to group that into one grouping of objects, I can use the rotate 90 degrees button to pop it there I can do control D move it along control D move it along and you can see I can get three girders onto one sheet of A4 paper so this is printed I use print stick to stick it to some half millimeter card I cut it all out stick it all together and that becomes the girder for the roof if you'd like to ask me any questions about what I've done please drop a question into the comments I will do a second part of this video to show how I do the glazing and how I do the elements that go together to make sure that the girders are in the right place to make up the roof in total. So thank you for watching. Hopefully my next video will show the completion of the roof on Chandwell. Um, and until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.